seven furlongs and he's got a rating of 77 compared to Anderton on 72. Interesting little race. The bottom two, Burren View Lady and Trixie Malone, look as though they're up against it. But do bear in mind Sarjinski has had one run in the States and comes here today and there's a little bit of a buzz on track for him. Anderton goes in. Let's go back up and join Gareth. Anderton has uh, slotted forward absolutely fine and uh, May Arzum will be the next and last. They're ready and they're off uh, racing for the subscribe online at racinguk.com maiden stakes Anderton in the red colours got a flyer on the outside the debutant Sarjinski is also racing uh, prominently and freely they're being followed a length and a half away by May Arzum back in third also keen in fourth is Bastian in the light blue and then a little wider out is Trixie Malone and uh, Burren View Lady in the black cap on a green jacket is the back marker so heading on now inside the final half uh, mile and on the run towards the halfway stage and it is Anderton who shows in front, uh, looking to get off the mark at the fourth time of asking. To the well-bred Sarjinski in second position, a half-brother to the Group 1 winner, Carry On Katie, from a few years ago. That one's in the yellow jacket. A length and a half away, Mayars and back in third under Paul Hannigan. And then against the rails is Bastian, and uh, the two outsiders are both outpaced at the back, Burren View Lady and Trixie Malone. It concerns the first four quartet as they are now inside the final two furlongs. Anderton in the red colours travels well here, perhaps best. Here to the outside, Sarjinski trying desperately hard, deeper still away to the left, Mayazam, and up the rails, Bastian, and now the complexion of the race changes. A furlong out, and Mayazam has kicked on here. Mayazam goes on a length or so to the good over Bastian in second, as Anderton drops to third. They're inside the final 100 yards, and Mayazam, on his fourth race course appearance, is going to get off the mark, and showed a fine turn of foot to do so. Mayazam in the hands of Paul Hannigan is the winner. Back in second position, Bastian. The front running Anderton was back in third, and then Burren View Lady along the inside of Sarjinski, well clear of Trixie Malone. Oh, well, for Charlie Hills and Paul Hannigan, May Arsum has won the maiden up at uh, Pontefract in some style from Bastian and Anderton, but we must head over to Kempton for their best race of the day, which is up next, the Bet Victor Casino on your mobile handicap. Jockey change here, uh, Tom Queeley takes over number two, Kimberella, from Louis Stewart, who was due to claim seven. Bright Strike is the 11 to 4 favourite. It's then 7 to 2 Intrigo, 5 to 1 Isis Blue. Excuse to Linger is 11 to 2. 6 to 1 Plunder from 8. 14 to 1 Byroness, uh, unbeaten at Kempton. 20 to 1 Kimberella, 33 to 1 Complexity. And Nenge Mboku is 33 to 1. Bright Strike uh, has a really progressive profile. Should have done the business as he did last time out, and he did so. Is he the right price or is he slightly just a bit too short considering what he's achieved in comparison to some also unexposed types? It's possibly a tad short, but I can see the support for it. Uh, showed a good level of ability in all three runs last year. The best one was a second to race and status last time of, of those. The Linkville comeback win at 1-8 to eight taught us nothing at all, but at mm -hmm. least uh, the horse is fit. One thing I would say about this race, we've learned from the first four races here today, Richie, all have gone to front runners. Yep. It seems to be the place to be. It's hard to be picking up. Looking through this race, though, four of these have made the running in the past. Uh, they are Bright Strike, Complexity, Plunder, and Nengi and Boko, and a few of these other, a few others also race prominently as well. So it could be a real battle for the lead, and could be a case of one of the jockeys getting there and trying to slow things down and stack things up behind him. Yeah. OK. Uh, there's been quite a bit of support for Plunder. We talked about him earlier on. Uh, I mentioned that he obviously made all to win at Kempton over course and distance, was it November now, last year, um, and was a bit too keen afterwards, wasn't he? Yeah, he just raced a little bit kingly at uh, Lingfield next time, which was a bit of a surprise, given he looked quite professional on debut when he was well-backed. He's been well-backed for this race today, was back last night. The money's continuing on course. Kevin Ryan's already had a couple of winners this afternoon mm. at various tracks. So Plunder clearly, clearly expected to uh, give Ryan another winner. If he can get things settled up front, if he can just race a, a, an even keel, I think he's, he's, got, he's a big contender in this race. But this is, this is definitely an interesting race. It's a really good class 0 to 85 handicap, but so many of these last time out winners as well. Yeah. Uh, another one of the last time out winners was uh, Intrigo, who uh, Looked a transformed horse at the end of last year, but that wasn't a fluke because he came in and won on the all-weather at Lingfield. Yeah, it was raised £11 for that Leicester win in the soft ground last autumn, but clearly thrived over the, wind, at the winter and uh, done very well to win at Lingfield last time up. Well, back to that occasion. This is 
another step up uh, the ladder, six pounds higher as well today, but he's clearly progressing well in Trigo and in a, in a very tricky handicap, he must have every chance. Mm. Isis Blue ran a really good race a couple of starts ago behind Melvin the Great, uh, just getting his act together closer close out to the race and finishing off well. Um, what did you make of the Southern run afterwards? Disappointing on the face of it at Southern last time, but he won't be the first horse to run poorly at Southern and bounce back elsewhere. Mm. Southern doesn't suit all horses. All I would say is that Isis Blue does need to improve on what he's shown from the previous runs because stable in form, but this is a, this is a decent race and I think he needs to bounce back with interest from that Southern run. Okay. Uh, Anything else that you want to mention? Because the runners are loading up quite yeah, quickly. There are Baroness, of course, who's unbeaten at the track. Yeah, but this is a stiff type of Baroness back against the boys here, but three from three at the track. An excuse to linger, not extended with landing the odds of Wolverhampton when last seen. Should get the strong run race to suit and has got a good chance. OK, cracking race coming up. Looks like Plunder might well be one of the last ones to load up. Let's join David. Thanks, Rishi. Yeah, Plunder will be the last as we just wait for Isis Blue. So as Isis Blue goes in, Plunder will be the final one. They're ready. And uh, they're off away and just squeeze out a little bit early excuse to linger. The Bet Victor Casino on your mobile handicap over seven furlongs. Plunder goes to the front for Phil Make in the dark blue and pink just pulling his whip through there on that one to have the lead. Tracked by Byroness, the maroon and white. The grey and maroon checked sleeves just restrained him behind his Kimberella. The apricot pale silks of Intrigo. Green sleeves to the outside. Cheap pieces Nenga and Boko. Tracked by dark blue and beige of Isis Blue. Racing very keenly indeed in the Purple colours at midfield is complexity and bright strike is one from the back and excuse to linger is last of all around about six lengths behind as they come inside their final half mile and it's the Kevin Ryan trained plunder with the advantage under Phil Makin from Richard Hughes on Intrigo in second and then Byron S bid into protector 100% record here for three from three in third for Ryan Tate as they come inside the three and then Kimberella and Tom Queeley now on board complexity up the rail the purple Nengi and Boko is now just being asked to try and get closer and bright strike is also being Produced coming inside the two by William Buick and he's starting to make headway. Look for the white colours, Green Hoop. Plunder taken on by Intrigo. Byron S running gamely the far side. Here comes Bright Strike under William Buick who now gets into the drive but he's looked pretty confident and no wonder because Bright Strike has taken off and got into the lead by a length and a half to Intrigo. Kimberella and Nengi and Boko and Bright Strike is going to follow up the win at Lingfield, driven out to score by two and a half to three lengths. Intrigo in second place, Kimberella in third, excuse to linger some headway for fourth. A pretty impressive performance from Bright Strike under uh, joint top weight in this race has beaten Intrigo with Kimberella, the other joint top weight, back in third. Well, for once, a horse that has been held up today at Kempton has stormed home to win. Uh, Bright Strike has produced a pretty impressive turn of foot, and the, the way he's won suggests there's more to come. Certainly, and considering as well that the leader. Plunder didn't really have to do too much in the early stages to get the lead. It didn't seem to be going at breakneck pace. Oh. And it's come through really well and won it in really good style in the end. And though it does most of the race in seven furlongs, you wouldn't think a step up in trip to a mile would cause any problem at all for the horse. Yeah, this uh, was a, a pretty impressive performance from Bright Strike, who's won this off a mark of 84. Uh, the suggestion from this performance suggests that well, you might well make it to Patton Company before long? Well he'll certainly be right in the, in the early 90s after yeah. this today anyway and there'll be other 0-95, 0-100 handicaps they can look at next month at the big meetings yeah. um, but certainly a 